Hello, this is Mike Lowry from Northern Kentucky University, and this is part two of a four-part series on creating Quake 2 models, that's MD2 models, for paper vision. And last time we actually built a model, and this time we're actually going to put a texture on that model. So let's go to 3ds Max and get started. So we're back in 3ds Max, and this is the model we built, very simple model, and what we want to do is put a texture on it. So the first thing you want to do after you've created your model is put a unwrap UV modifier on it. So let's go up to that list and grab that and start the procedure. So we're done with Edible Poly. In your modifier list, you want to click and go down to unwrap UV map. And there you go, unwrap UV map, go ahead and click on that, and now you have that in your modifier list. Let's go back up there. Let's open that up and let's click on face. There we go. And of course you want to make sure that your model is selected. Okay, and everything's red and highlighted as uh, was discussed in Alex Green's videos on modeling as well. So what we're going to do now is we actually want to uh, flatten this out. So with face selected on the uh, unwrap UV map, you're going to see there's in the parameters menu there's an edit button. Go ahead and click that and you immediately get this pop up. And it looks kind of wild and crazy and so what we want to do is flatten that. So you go to mapping and you click on flatten mapping. And here's all the presets right here and they all should be pretty good. And so hit, hit OK. And now what you see is basically a map that should look very similar to the size of your houses and you click on there you can see the different sides. I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do two things at one once. We're going to click on these so you can see uh, the different sides of the house highlighting. So pretty much we've mapped out your uh, your surfaces and there's the roof right there and there's the other sides. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to pull this into a Photoshop editing program. So let's continue the process and get this into Photoshop. So let's go to Tools and hit Render UV Template. And once again, all these presets should be kind of okay, but I want to talk about some of these numbers. Here's your width and height of your map, and that's 1024 by 1024. It's kind of large. And I want to bring that down, and I really want to bring that down to 256 by 256 because that actually gives me the ability to use hardware acceleration. But for now, I'm just going to keep 512 by 512, so let's adjust those. Using a multiple of two will give you MIP mapping, which are those series of already defined templates. It actually makes things run much faster. And we want to go to this model right here and click Solid. And we're good there. And click on Render UV Template. And there you have it. You've just made your template, and you can take this into Photoshop, put all the different colors or images or textures that you want on here, and bring it back and put it on your model. So you want to save this, so I'm going to click on this... Uh, little icon here. It looks like a little disk. And navigate to where you want to put your uh, image on the hard drive. I'm just going to put uh, test image um, quake. Okay, so I'm going to give it a name. It's uh, test image quake and I'm going to give it a format. Uh, you get, there's a number of formats you can choose from. I'll choose a JPEG or a ping. We'll just choose ping for now. We're going to save that to our desktop. And all these should be pretty good. So I'm going to go with those presets hit OK. It's saved to the desktop. And now I can bring it into an image editing processor like Photoshop or GIMP. Uh, put my textures, as I said earlier, on it. And bring that back into 3ds Max. Let's go to Photoshop. We're in Photoshop right now. And if there's one image processing program you're going to learn, then it's Photoshop. Now there's others. And if you don't have the money, then use GIMP. It's free. And it'll do pretty much the same job. But Photoshop has a lot of capability and especially with CS4 it's extremely powerful and brings you once again into that 3D realm. It's going to bring our image in so we're just going to file and open. Open up and let's look for our file. I believe it was a ping. Name some name that we'll never forget. So it's on the desktop. We're going to go to the desktop here. We're going to look for that Im image name. There it is. Test image quake ping. So let's open that up. And here's our image, and you won't be able to see all of it, but what I'm going to do here is extremely simple. I'm just going to put solid colors on this, just to make it easy on myself. So you can see I have some solid colors selected already here. I'm going to grab this uh, little uh, 
paint can here and just throw some colors on these uh, different sides. And once again, go to the uh, book tutorial site and you want to look at uh, how this is actually done the right way. We're just doing this very quickly to show you the procedure of doing this uh, to build quick models. And we'll just choose some other uh, colors. Like the roof might want to be want to make that black, your black roof. And then we're going to just choose some other colors. Hey, let's have a greenish side, I guess. So there we go, got some sides there. Oops, that's not green. There we go. And let's make a trim. We'll make it red. Just have some things stand out here. There we go. And I think we're good there. We're going to go ahead and save this and bring this into 3ds Max. So just go up to Photoshop and go save. And once again, we'll save this as a ping. And I'm just going to put the name solid next to this to let me know that I, this is indeed a solid color. And save. And so that's pretty much the process. Now let's bring this into 3ds Max. So I'm back in 3ds Max and I actually want to see if uh, my color, my uh, Photoshop map actually fits the uh, the masking map here in 3ds Max. So you go here to this uh, drop down list in your Edit UVs uh, pop up and go pick texture. And when you do that up comes the material map browser. We're going to click on bitmap just to basically navigate to the bitmap we created and bring that in. And it should be something called solid and there it is, test house test image quake solid and hit open and what you can see is my image uh, map that I created in Photoshop has been brought into my mask here and it looks great and uh, I want to get that onto the house so you can see it so that's the next step so now let's hit M to bring up the material editor and make sure you click on the first sphere and you want to come down here in this material editor and look at the diffuse button right here and click on that and that brings up your material map browser. Go to bitmap. And we're going to browse to that image that we made in Photoshop. There is right there. Uh, Test image quake 2. Solid. And you can see there it is right on my sphere. So what I want to do is drag that onto my house. So I'm going to go from there and just drag it and drop it right onto my house. And it has applied the image to it. Isn't that great? And I can see that. And if you have problems seeing that, just come along here and click on this box right here. And you should be able to see that. And you can also quick render that as well. So now I have my image on my house and I'm ready to export this for milk shape. So come on up here. So come up to the file menu and click on export. And you want to export it as a 3D studio dot 3DS. So let's give it a name. We'll call it Quake house and hit save. Go ahead and hit uh, preserve Max's texture coordinates. That's what we want to do. Hit OK. And it's done it. And now you're ready to bring this in the milk shape and turn it into a MD2 model. Let's do it.